Hey everyone, today is day three of Advent of Code 2022. You're going to get to see me explain my solutions and go through all that code in a detailed manner. Um, but first, you're going to see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. So here we go. Hey everyone, so today I finally got onto the leaderboard. In fact, I am rank 70 today. I solved the problem in 4 minutes and 55 seconds, which is pretty fast. And I think the part of the puzzle that helped with that is just that it was relatively straightforward. There wasn't any implementation specialties. There weren't any like special modulo tricky stuff like with, yester yeah, like with yesterday's advent of code. Today was all just relatively straightforward implementation. But right now I'm going to talk through a bit of my thought process behind how I implemented it and how I managed to get it so quickly. Um, but first of all, for those of you who aren't familiar with the puzzle, I'm going to read the puzzle and sort of explain what the problem is asking. If you want to skip that, check in the timestamps below to jump straight to the explanations. So day three is about rucksack or reorganization. One elf has the important job of loading all of the rucksacks with supplies for the jungle journey. Unfortunately, that elf didn't quite follow the pack instructions, so a few items now need to be rearranged. Okay, so the important bit is that each rucksack has two large compartments, and there are items in each compartment. There are a couple of errors in the rucksacks, and they need our help. The elves need our help to find those errors. Every item is represented by a lowercase or an uppercase character, so here we can see an example of an input. Each character here represents a different item in a rucksack. So it turns out that there are as many rucksacks as there are lines, each line represents a rucksack, and each line has an even number of characters. The first half of each line represents the first compartment of a rucksack, and the second half of the line represents the second compartment in that rucksack. What we're asked to find is the total value of all the items that appear in both compartments across all rucksacks. So for example, in this first line, um, it starts V, J, R, W, P, etc. And the item that appears in both the first half and the second half is the letter P. So this is the item that's shared between both halves of the rucksack. Each item has an associated value. So A through Z, lowercase, have priorities 1 through 26. And uppercase values have uh, priorities 27 through 52. So we're asked just to find the sum of all the priorities of all the items that are shared between both compartments. Okay, let me explain a bit of my thought process, what went through my head when I very briefly skimmed this puzzle. So, first of all, Python has a very useful um, library called ASCII that contains a bunch of utility stuff for sort of string manipulation and encoding help. One of these things is called ASCII lowercase and ASCII uppercase. These are constants that are contained within the library that represent the entire ASCII English alphabets um, from A to Z, either in lowercase or uppercase. So if we print this out, if we print out ASCII lowercase, um, what we're going to get is all the letters from A through Z, lowercase. And this is just a really fast way of getting lowercase characters without having to type it out all, uh, all yourself. Similarly, with ASCII uppercase, that's just all the uppercase characters. If we print out key, which is a variable I've created here that adds together both the lowercase and the uppercase letters, then we get a string, um, this long string, in which we can search for any given character to determine its priority. Um, and this is because the lowercase characters go 1 through 26, and the uppercase characters go 27 through 52. So lowercase a is going to have index 0, uppercase a is going to have index 26, um, for example, and lowercase um, uppercase z is going to have index 56. Uh, sorry, 51. Now what's this, what this lets us do is to find the priority of any given item, we look for its location within this string, and then we add 1, because priorities start from 1 and not 0, and indices are 0 indexed. So all we have to do here is go through all of the lines of the inputs, which I have done here by the standard Python file reading, um, just opening it and then stripping all of the new lines at the end. So my, my input file contains an extra new line at the end, because that's something I've configured in VS Code. Um, so we basically split apart all the lines by the new line character to just get a list of all of the lines. Remember, each line represents a rucksack. So we, we iterate through all of the rucksacks. We get the length. For every rucksack, we get the length of the number of items. So this is how many items there are in the rucksack total. We split it into the first half and the second half to symbolize the first and second compartments. And I just realized it, was pro it would probably be helpful for me to uh, make my font a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through all elements of the key. 
Now recall this is just that big 52 character string that represents all the letters from A through Z, lowercase and then uppercase. As we iterate, again, we know that the index of the character represents its priority, minus one. So what this loop lets us do is get the index and the character um, that corresponds to that index. So for example here, um, I'm doing this many times, but you can see within one iteration of the loop, we know that A has um, priority zero, or rather index zero within this big string. Um, lowercase b has index one, x has index 23, and all the uppercase letters have indices um, from 26 through 51. Again, we have to add one to these eventually because um, strings are zero indexed. And what we do is we just compare um, all of the characters to see if they are both in the first compartment and in the second compartment. And if so, we add that priority to our total answer. So that's sort of my basic thought process. I realized I just went through the code um, explaining it, um, but my my thought process was just to see like brute force, basically. Um, go through all the lines, read the inputs, split it into the first and the second half, go through all the letters in the alphabets, um, basically all the items, and see if they exist in both halves. And if they do, then we can add that value, um, that priority, by looking at that large string that contains all of the lowercase and uppercase letters. So a bit of prior knowledge helped here about this library. Um, would highly recommend using it, uh, just remembering it in case you ever need it in a timely fashion. And just so you don't have to type out all the letters in the English alphabet, you know, because you need that sometimes. And, you know, this just helps you remove any errors and is way faster. Okay, let's look at part two. So part two, as you finish identifying the misplaced items, the elves come to you with another issue. For safety, the elves are divided into groups of three. Every elf carries a badge that identifies their group. For efficiency, within each group of three elves, the badge is the only item carried by all three elves. Skip a bit of the flavor text. Basically, um, within each group of three elves, there is, ex there is exactly one item that is common between all three elves in the group. So in our inputs, uh, let me just open it up real quick. Um, we have 300 lines here, and we have groups of three um, that we can divide them into. Each group of three is a group of three elves, and we want to find the letter that is present in all of these three lines. So basically here we're disregarding compartments. Um, they're not a thing anymore, or they're not a thing we care about, and we want to look at which letter appears through all of these three lines. Now this is kind of similar to part one, just instead of checking two parts, we have to check three parts. Since we have 300 lines, what we can do is iterate through all 300 lines using this for loop. Now what this for loop does is it counts up from zero to the number of lines minus one because zero indexing, um, but by three. So since there are 300 lines here, it will count up from zero to 300 by three. This is what this range um, object is doing. Up by three, zero, three, six, nine, we can get the group of three rucksacks by simply getting the next three lines. So for example, when we're iterating and we hit 12, i equals 12, then we will look at the next three lines, 12, 13, and 14. And this is what this slice function is doing. It is going from index i to index i plus three to get the next three lines. And using this, we'll get groups of three. So now we have a list of three lines, and all we have to do is, again, go through all of the characters in the English alphabet, uppercase and lowercase, and then check if that character is present inside all three lines. Python offers a really nice way to do this by providing this all function, which takes in an iterable object and returns whether everything in that iterable object is true. -y. Basically, if all of them are true, um, or if they're not all Booleans, then it converts whatever is in those lists, uh, whatever is in that list to a Boolean. So this list is just going to contain three Booleans, um, whether the character C has appeared in all three rucksacks. And if it has, then we simply add it to our answer, or rather the priority of the item to our answer, because that's what we're asked to find. So to summarize, we're going through groups of three lines. For each group, we are checking all 52 characters, lowercase and uppercase, to see if that character appears inside all three rucksacks. If so, then we add that priority to our answer, um, again, using that trick from part one, using the big string to get that index and character all in one. Um, so at the end, our answer is going to be stored in this answer variable, and we can just print it out and use it. So that's it for day three of Advent of Code 2022. I explained a little bit more of my thought process. Basically, since we're doing string manipulation, what libraries can we use? Well, we can use this ASCII Python library, sorry, string Python library, which provides very useful string manipulation methods. And this is just something that comes from experience. And then we're going to brute force, check every set of strings that we need to check and go through all the characters to see if they're all in that set. Because um, that's 
the essence of today's puzzles. So that's it for day three. I got rank 70, which I'm pretty happy with, and I'll try to continue shooting for the leaderboards so that I can maybe someday even make it onto the global leaderboard, which is really hard considering that today I only got, what, 30 points, and uh, the bottom has 110 points. So it's going to be a bit of a ride, um, and I think I will be able to make it onto the global leaderboard eventually. At least, at least that's the hope. So um, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Uh, if you want to check out my code, that's going to be on the GitHub repository, which is linked to in the description. So thanks for watching day three. I'll see you tomorrow for day four.